Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to work on the architecture of this somewhat complicated fuel system. <laughs> For those of you who have been following this build, you'll know that right behind me here is a 1969 Porsche 911. It was a race car that I'm now converting back to a street car. It's powered by a twin turbo Subaru EZ30R flat six. Now I'm not going into the engine, meaning I'm not going to reinforce it. I'm not doing new rods and closed deck and ARP, you know, head studs and all those things. I'm not doing any of that stuff. This engine will handle about 400 horsepower without going into the engine, but it is a high compression engine. So to do that, I need to run E85 ethanol in this engine so I don't blow the thing to smithereens. Now, if I'm gonna run E85, there are a number of different things that I need to do to make sure my fuel system can handle such things. First of all, this is a fuel safe fuel cell. So this thing has a racing fuel cell in it. I need to make sure that my fuel pump is capable of E85. I gotta make sure I have a good filter on it. I've gotta get my fuel rails all dialed in. I need a rising rate fuel regulator so that when I've got more boost going into the engine, I've got more fuel going into the engine. And finally, I need a flex fuel sensor, which is something that Haltech includes in their Elite 2500. It doesn't come with it, but it is capable of handling E85 and all kinds of cool exotic fuels. So we've got to sort all of that out today, where stuff's gonna go, how I'm gonna architect it, where I'm gonna run the lines, etc., etc. Let's get into it. Okay, behind me I have a whole bunch of very cool things. I reached out to Aeroflow, who I think I first heard of on Mighty Car Mods, and they were happy enough to help a little bit out with the build and they sent me some stuff. I couldn't believe how quickly it got here from Australia. Like they shipped it on Monday and it got here on Thursday, which is crazy for the other side of the planet. So let me walk you through this stuff. Uh, first things first, this is a five port fuel distribution block. So we're gonna come from the front of the car through the tunnel, pop out. We're gonna go into this fuel distribution block, right? Boom. And then split out into each fuel rail, and then out of the fuel rail into this. And this is a rising rate fuel regulator. It's really pretty. All this stuff is like really pretty billet aluminum awesomeness, right? So that's those two pieces. Before any of that happens, before any of that happens, it's gotta go through this, which is my fuel pump. I couldn't believe actually how difficult it was to find an external fuel pump that was capable of running E85. Uh, most of them were internal, like they were internal tank fuel pumps. So I'm glad I found this one. The form factor is based on the Bosch 044, which is actually the stock fuel pump. This thing's actually got a little bit of heft to it. Then here is a, I think a 60 micron, uh, 40 micron uh, fuel filter. This thing will go, I think before the fuel pump. So it'll go fuel tank through this filter, filter to pump, pump to distribution block, distribution block to rising rate regulator, rising rate regulator to flex fuel sensor from Haltech, and then back to the tank. I think that's how it goes. I will double check that. So if you guys are yelling, no, that's wrong. I will double check that. One thing I need to do is pull the top cover off of the fuel tank and kind of look inside. It's never been used before, but it has an internal bladder that I think typically if you were doing a race car has to be replaced every couple of years. This has obviously never been replaced. So I'm gonna pull the tank out and we're gonna work on just seeing what that bladder looks like so I can order a new one. Okay, let's pull this fuel tank out and see what we're looking at. Uh, but this is a kind of a score. These things like $3,000 or something for this crazy fuel tank. But what I want to do is take this middle panel off that big oval right there. And I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> Here's 
the inside of a racing fuel cell. And so you can see right here, it's all filled with this. First thing I can say is it's like this sponge-like material and that stops the fuel from sloshing back and forth and starving. And then the entire thing is lined with this, like, I wanna say it's Kevlar, because that's certainly what it feels like. It's like a Kevlar plastic liner. And I was really worried that, you know, after 20 years, this thing was gonna be in rough shape, but it looks like it's in perfect condition. So that feels really good. I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'll get new hardware all the way around. I'll probably do something where I'll uh, paint or, you know, finish this top, and then I'll get all nice new hardware for all the spots. I'll replace these screws with probably some button head cap screws. And uh, yeah, and then get hardware for all this stuff so it looks all pretty and brand new. But this thing looks like it's in great condition right now. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but the factory location for this pump, which is kind of just like the Bosch 044, is right here. And this cross member under the suspension even has like the circular cutout for this pump, which is really cool. Now, I think there might be a bracket that's supposed to go here. I've seen also people do it with uh, hose clamps. I'm just gonna throw a zip tie in there for now. Oh my God, I think the zip tie is gonna be like one tooth too short. Oh, I got it, sweet. All right, that's basically where it's gonna go. Step one, complete. The next thing I wanna do is mount this fuel distribution block to the engine. I think it's gonna go somewhere right around here. So I'm gonna use these two holes and then make some sort of L bracket uh, using these existing holes that are on here. It mounts kinda like that. Okay, while the paint is drying on that part, which by the way, you guys saw in time-lapse, but it took me the better part of two hours to make that little part. Uh, but the paint's drying now, it came out really good. Now I have to find out where I'm gonna mount this bad boy, which is just a nice little piece of jewelry, and my flex fuel sensor as well. I don't know how it goes yet, but I'll figure out how to route this thing. But um, yeah, in one side, out the other. And uh, yeah, let's figure that out. Okay, I've decided not to overcomplicate my life here and just try to go super high tech with everything. For this, I'm going to mount it somewhere around here. It's gonna pop onto the side of this wall. I don't have any issues with putting a bolt through there. Plus I need to make room in case I do a, like a custom coolant reservoir, which I might right here. And then I may also have to have 
uh, an oil cooler out there. So I can't just make a plate and mount everything to it. And with the flex fuel, I'm also gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna pop it right there under this bad boy and that should be fine. I could also technically do it probably right here, which would might be another option, but I'd rather not have bolts going through this section of the car. I don't mind them going in this sort of seat bucket because the whole thing's gonna be covered anyway. We're gonna to tour our accomplishments for the day. That is the rising rate fuel pressure regulated, mounted nicely there. I've got my flex fuel underneath, right there, all nice and tucked in. Again, how nice is it to have this hardware? And then the creme de la creme, which is this sweet bracket holding my awesome fuel distribution block to the engine using some OEM mounting points on the bottom. Looks awesome. That was a very good day at the office. Let's take a tour through what we did. Number one, inspected the fuel safe fuel cell. Looks awesome. I had no issues with what I saw on the inside or the outside. I will of course gussy it up when the time comes. We got the fuel pump mounted underneath where the factory location is. Probably have to find a bracket somewhere so I can mount it like the factory did. Then moved to the back of the car. We got a really cool bracket made for the fuel distribution block. That turned out really, really good. I got my rising rate fuel regulator installed on the right hand side of the engine compartment. And finally the flex fuel sensor mounted to the underside of what would have been the rear seats. I'm super excited. I think it all came out really great. You know, some of this stuff isn't as sexy as others, but this is all like infrastructure of building a car, stuff that I've never done before. So it was really cool. It was cool for me to kind of explore where things had to go and really think about the engineering and the pathway of the fuel. So as always, send a high five in the comments. You guys keep on rocking. Love y'all. I'll talk to you later. Thank mm -hmm. you.